Today, I would like to explore with you a roadmap to a more meaningful life, to more joy and more energy, more focus, more awesomeness, by understanding what living on purpose means to you. So that word purpose is um, in the cultural and corporate zeitgeist, right? We, we've heard it several times. Um, but it's one of those slippery big concepts that's kind of hard to pin down. And perhaps maybe you've done some exercises on purpose, right? Maybe you have done them and then put them away for later. Or maybe when you've thought about the concept of purpose, you've thought, yeah, that's for other people. That's for older people or younger people or richer people. But today I want to light a fire under you because there is a real human cost to not living on purpose. Maybe it's the headaches or the muscle pain. Maybe it's that feeling of overwhelm or like you're headed toward burnout. Maybe it's that every day you're doing all the things that you have to do, but none of the things that you want to do. So I'll say it again. Today I want to offer you a roadmap to a more meaningful life by understanding what living on purpose can actually mean to you. And to do that, I'm going to do it in three parts. First, we're going to define purpose in normal human terms. Then I'm going to give you a quick exercise as a way to kind of set you off on your path, a first step toward living purposefully. And third, we are going to look at the emotional reasons and the practical reasons that hold you back when you try to make behavior change and when you try to live purposefully. We're going to look at some of those uncomfortable feelings that often get in the way. But first, let's define purpose. So purpose can be defined many different ways, but based on my research and my work with thousands of people nationwide and hundreds of students here at this university, I define purpose as using your strengths in keeping with your values to make a positive impact on others. Now, sometimes when people think about purpose, they think about it in terms of that larger why, like that question of why am I here? Or what was I put on this earth to do? And those are really, really valid, good questions. But today I want to look at it more in terms of concrete terms, that why are you doing the things that you are doing in your everyday life? So purpose actually can be considered kind of an answer to that inner toddler inside ourselves that's saying, why, why, why all the time, especially when we're challenged with things that we don't necessarily want to do. There's this wonderful parable of a traveler who came across three men working. And he went up to the first one and said, what are you doing? And the first one said, I'm putting one brick on top of another. And that was true. The second man said, I'm building a wall. That was also true. But when he asked the third man what he was doing, he said, I'm building a cathedral. So that first man had a job. The second man had a career. And that third man had a calling, had a vision, had a purpose. And in all of our everyday lives, we're just kind of like those bricklayers, right? We're laying one brick on top of another. In our jobs, those bricks can seem like heavy and not so glamorous work. In our personal lives, wow, those bricks can really seem heavy at times, right? But having that larger why, that vision of what we are doing, well, that's what keeps us going. That's what guides us. And in fact, research shows that having a sense of purpose in your life, having a sense of that larger why, is correlated with all sorts of fabulous outcomes. We see it correlated with um, healthier living, better relationships, longer life, even more money in your pocket. So hopefully I've begun to convince you that purpose is a good thing, is something that we really want to highlight in our lives. And then you may be asking, great, now, so how do I do it? Well, that's the second thing that I want to look at today. So a kind of concept like purpose is big and amorphous. And research tells us that when we have these big ideas, we need to break them down into smaller steps. And that turns a kind of daunting task into hopefully a more pleasurable exploration of possibilities. So I'm going to give you an exercise that you can either do right now here with me, or you can take home and do for later. I'm going to ask you three questions. And we're going to put it together all into a little bit of a purpose statement at the end. So the first question is, what do I value? What's meaningful to me? What do I care about? Now, this is actually a pretty tough question, because oftentimes we think of all the things we should do rather than the things that 
um, we actually want to value ourselves. And we get all sorts of messages from many other places. But asking yourself, what do you value? Do you value perseverance? Do you value personal responsibility? Maybe it's unity with nature. Think about three core values that you have that kind of drive what you are doing in your life or that you want to have driving what you're doing in your life and jot them down. Next question, what are you good at? What, do you, what are your gifts? Now, when I think about this question, I think of it not necessarily in terms of can-do skills, but in terms of want-to skills. So for example, I can pack a suitcase like a champ, but that's not something I'm gonna list as one of my gifts. It's not something I wanna do every day, right? So what are the things that light you up inside that you're good at? Maybe it's performance. Maybe it's uh, seeing possibilities. Maybe it's making connections among other people. Think about three gifts. And then, the last thing, think about who you want to have a positive impact on. Do you want to positively impact your family and your friends, your community, a particular social cause? What do you want to use your gifts in keeping with your values to positively impact? When you have all three of those, now we get to play a little bit of a Mad Libs game. We get to put all of these phrases together. So you're going to have a total of nine phrases, and we can put them together in a sentence some, that goes something like this. Because I value, and then you put in your values, I will use my gifts for to positively impact the lives of, and then you go for whoever you want to positively impact. Now, if you do this very simple exercise, you have already taken a first step toward a roadmap to living more purposefully, which is good, okay? So when you take small steps, you boost your self-efficacy. Self-efficacy is a fancy academic word for saying that it's our sense of, of confidence, that we can actually get the job done. And when we boost our self-efficacy on small tasks, it actually gives us the energy to tackle larger tasks. Because now we're gonna get to the third part about what I wanna talk to you about. And this is the part that like, really no one ever talks about, which is that you can do as many fabulous purpose exercises as you want and not actually live on purpose. Why? Well, because there are practical and emotional reasons that often get in the way of living a purposeful life. And so I want to look at both of those today. Just like those bricklayers who have challenges as they're building their cathedral, right? We need to do some pre-planning, we need to envision a little bit, and then we need to anticipate the obstacles along the way. So now you've got th some draft of a purpose statement, right? And you're kind of like this fish. You're excited. You're going to jump into a new pond, and you're going to go toward new adventures. OK. So uh, then what do you want to do? You want to set a goal, right? You have a good purpose statement. You want to set goals to accomplish it. So let's say perhaps one of your values um, is healthy living. And one of your goals might be to go to the gym, right? That seems like a good goal. OK. So there's this cool new Zumba class or whatever that you want to do, and uh, it's an hour, and you're going to go three times a week, okay? But then, of course, it's 15 minutes to get there and 15 minutes to get back, and then you'll need about 30 minutes, maybe, to change and get on to your next thing, okay? So that's two hours a day, two hours each time you go, and you want to go three days a week. So that's six hours for this new goal that you have set. Here's the question we almost never ask ourselves. What six hours am I going to take out of my existing schedule to make this new goal happen? All of a sudden, right, we come to a screeching halt. Because, like, we're busy, we're slammed, we don't have six hours to take out of our day, right? Well, if you have a goal that actually has a purpose behind it, it becomes more than just a goal. It becomes a purpose-based commitment. A purpose-based commitment is a how with a why. And when you have a how with a why, well, then you actually might say, it's kind of worth it to me. Maybe I'm going to watch a little less TV. Maybe I'll get a little less sleep. I will move around my schedule so that I can live out my purpose. Because the sad fact is, of course, that we're always doing something, right? So we can't add anything to our day without taking something away. If you look at that, that is one big, huge practical stepping stone that uh, we often trip over on our roadmap and path to purpose. OK. So now, that's the practical. But then it gets even more challenging, because there are a lot of uncomfortable feelings that come along for the ride anytime we begin a journey of change. 
And I call this, these uncomfortable feelings, the other story of our lives, right? And I think it's important as we journey toward purpose to look at both stories. And I'll explain here. We all have two stories, right? We have a story of success, of all your fabulous accomplishments. And that got you into this room today, right? All the good things you've done, the good relationships. But you also have another story, a story of anxieties, of a fear of failure, of those concerns and those worries, those uncomfortable feelings. That story we don't often like to talk about. But you know what? That story got you into this room today, too. Both are you. We all have two stories. And as we journey on this path to purpose, we need to embrace both of them. Because guess what? It takes a heck of a lot of energy to suppress one story all the time. It takes a huge amount of energy to try to run away from those anxious feelings, to try to pretend that everything is perfect all the time. If we can embrace both stories of our lives, then in fact, we free ourselves up to have more energy to put toward our purpose. We free ourselves up for more joy, more fabulousness in our own lives. And I know this because I have two stories. So I went to Princeton. I went to Oxford. I got my PhD there. I have three beautiful children. I write books. I give big speeches. I have a wonderful community of friends and family. That's one story of my life, and that is me. But this is also me. From a young age, I really felt the pressure to succeed. I felt the pressure to be perfect. And as I grew up, my inner critic became the size of Godzilla. And I did hide it mostly behind a very well-practiced smile. But as I entered my professional life, some people said that that was getting a little brittle. They called it the Christine show because it didn't seem like the real me. My anxiety increased. And all of a sudden, I started getting angry. Like, you know that kind of anger when you're talking through your teeth? Because you worry that if you actually open your mouth to talk, then like the monster is going to come out? Yeah, that was me. I was teaching classes on happiness, but I wasn't happy. I was often called a superwoman, but I was in part using my superpowers of organization and focus to outrun my demons, to outrun my anxieties and my fears. It got so bad that I could no longer run anymore. And when I had to stop, and when I had to look at both of my stories and realize both of those stories were me, an amazing thing happened. I realized that the stories of, the, that the story of anxiety and fear, well, you know, that, that quest for perfection actually fueled my career. And that sense of potentially like overzealous personal responsibility, yeah, well, that helped me accomplish everything that I accomplished and also build my family. When I learned to stop running from that other story and embrace it as the whole messy me, all of a sudden, I was released. I could like be my normal, silly, joyful self because I wasn't always trying to suppress a huge part of me. All of us have two stories. And on your path to authentic purpose, I encourage you to look at both of them, to embrace both of them, because then you can have the ability to move forward. Just think about it. More collaboration, more listening, more delegation, more love, more moving forward. All of these things can be possible when you embrace both of your stories. And to do this, I added a little bit more to my purpose statement exercise. I realized that that first part wasn't enough. Instead, I added two more parts. First, that I accepted my fears and anxieties about 
whatever it was. And I added those in. And I encourage you to do the same. Now, this is an uncomfortable thing to think about often, right? But if you accept your fears and anxieties, it will liberate you to live in the light of your own awesomeness. So list a couple. And then the next thing I said was, despite all of those things that might be holding me back, I make purpose-based commitments to move forward, to live my purpose in these various realms. So when you put that all together, it comes into a very long, somewhat overwhelming statement. But let's just look at this one. Because I value relationships, perseverance, and creativity, I'll use my gifts for translating research, making connections, and organization to positively impact the lives of my children, my students, and the broader public. I accept my fears and anxieties about not being perfect enough, about maybe being a fraud and letting my loved ones down, and still today make purpose-based commitments to synthesize academic research into real-life application, to care for myself as well as my loved ones, and to bring transformative ideas to as many people as possible. Wow. When I look at this, I am totally inspired. I say, yes, that is me, the whole messy, awesome me. And I feel the desire to move forward and to make it really happen. I hope that you yourself will challenge yourself to do a similar exercise and that you too will feel equally inspired when you get there. Now, on this journey that we're on, we're like the bricklayers putting one brick on top of the other as we build our cathedral. And you have several choices as you make this journey. You can embrace your gifts, and you can use them out of a sense of fear, right? Out of a sense that, it's, it, that, that we, are, we have to do these things, that we have to hide a part of ourselves. And you know what? If you do that, I don't think you'll ever find the joy and the meaning that you're looking for. Or you can embrace your gifts, and we all have gifts. You have a gift. You have a gift. I have a gift. We can embrace our gifts in the service of love, love of not just others, but love of ourselves and the difference that we can make in the world. And if you embrace those gifts out of the service of love, my hope is that you will come to know what I have begun to see is possible, which is that authentic purpose doesn't mean running. It means embracing life with more meaning, more joy, more focus, and more energy. So I am on this journey of purpose, and I hope you'll join me. Thank you very much.